Hello, so we're here on Summerhill on 15th of June. Um, we're going to skip out on our normal colony today. Uh, normal colony's doing fine, it's probably just reached the peak and it's slowing down now. <laughs> Everything in there is kind of fine, so it's not the most interesting one. One of the other colonies, intermittently, it, its behaviour has just been slightly below some of the others. Um, and because we're keeping them in a public space like this, and you can see it's quite buzzy around us now. Um, so, did we want to keep this colony going? It was showing signs of maybe having to think about swarming anyway, and we'd already split it. So made the decision last week to take the queen out. Found her, after a fashion, and got rid of her. Um, so now we've come back through this colony today, and we're looking to thin the queen cells, but we've also made a decision to do something extra. So if you can see on the top of the box here, we've been through the lower box already and found about a dozen plus um, fairly rubbishy emergency queen cells, which we've taken out. We've been through one of our really nice colonies and we've pulled out a frame of brood um, with eggs, young larvae and some sealed brood, which is probably easier to see. And we've stuck a couple of drawing pins in that. The plan is we're going to do some really very, very simple queen rearing. <laughs> We've taken the queen out of this colony. It's a strong colony. It will do a lot to raise a new queen. It already has done. And we're going to go through this top box in a second to go through and find any more queen cells. But rather than let it raise a queen from its own genetics, we're going to put in this frame of eggs from a known good colony and we're going to hope that when they raise queens on this, the genetic line will have changed and will have improved the stock and will have improved the queen. They're not horrible. Last year they were being a bit, and this year we kind of sort of thought, oh, actually, and gave them a second chance in the spring, and they were being all right. But as their colonies got bigger, it's just, it's just the wrong side of, of kind of what I'm happy with here. So as we go through, out of frame, nothing on it. We've got a pin where we left the queen cell last week when we took the queen out. So we come here seven days afterwards for a very good reason. At seven days, they should not be able to raise any more queen cells themselves from the eggs of the old queen. They can make queen cells on larvae up to three days old and they can obviously make queen cells from eggs but at seven days <laughs> hopefully they shouldn't be able to raise queen cells there's another queen cell there it was open the larvae was half fallen out of it anyway so we need to be quite thorough in this process that we take out all the queen cells from the old queen there's two there to be honest, we've marked a queen cell that should have been around here somewhere from last time, but I can't see that one now. Another queen cell there, might have been that one, but it's a bit of a runty. See these runty little emergency cells? Sometimes they can be alright, but the less well fed they are in, that, in those few days between egg and being sealed, makes a huge difference to their, uh, to their life. So as we go through, just to make sure we haven't missed any, I'm going to shake some bees off. If you've got queen cells on frames that you want to keep the queen cells, don't do the shaking thing, because you can shake the larvae out of the royal jelly and do it damage. So if you're ever going to shake something like that, shake it upside down. Shake the frame upside down. More queen cells here. And they can be quite little, so you do have to be quite thorough. To be honest, if we decided to leave queen cells in here from this stock, I have yet to see one that would knock my socks off. Most of them have been fairly poor looking. So maybe we're doing it a favour in two different ways.
So we've been through the rest of this upper box, so we've been through the lower box and the upper box of this, and we've pulled out at least 30 queen cells. Most of them horrible little runty ones. To be honest, there was nothing that was fantastic. So into this hive is going a frame from the colony we've been following all season, one of the favorite colonies here. And I'm gonna put that in the middle of the upper box, uh, closest to where there's still a little bit, not much, but a little bit of open brood. So that's hopefully where it'll be best nurtured. The best queens are raised in big, strong colonies that can look after them. That's exactly what this is. So I put a couple of drawing pins in so I can't miss this frame next time around. Having knocked down every queen cell, I don't think this hive should be able to make any more queen cells. If in a week's time I find any more, apart from on this frame, I'll knock them down. Anything on this frame, um, we'll select the best one and that'll be our hopefully our new queen. If there's no queen cells on this one, I'll have to think about it. But there will be. There will be. So now all we have to do is close up this hive and let it go on with it. We've put it back by a week of its natural kind of process, so we're doing this mid-June. By the time the queen hatches out, it's going to be the end of June. Um, by the time the queen's mated and laying, we could be into mid or even late July. So we're starting already to think about the countdown to winter. So we wouldn't want to do this too much later than here, which is why we've made the decisions when we've done it.